Hi, today I want to share my experience developing a version checking system I use in my real store mobile game. And what is a version checking system? And why is this system needed? If you launch your mobile game, there must be a version like 1.0.0. And if you want to update the version for reasons like fixing bugs or updating new contents, you need to change the version and launch again on the App Store or Google Play Store. But there is a problem. People playing your game with the old version are hard to find whether the game is updated, so that players may still suffer from the bugs fixed in the newer version or can't enjoy the new content on your game. As I talked about in my devlog, there was a critical bug that players couldn't play my game anymore. So I quickly fixed it, but I realized that there is no way to tell I fixed the bug to the players. In iOS, there is an automatic app updating feature that can turn off, so there is no guarantee that all people update the game to the latest version. So we need a way to notify people playing our, our game that there is a new version on the App Store. This is what is called the version checking system in this video, and I want to share how I implement this feature using Unity Remote Config Service. What is Unity Remote Config Service? In short, this is a key value storage in the cloud. So in the game, you can read the value from this storage and do something with this. As this key value pair is saved in the cloud, all game clients can read this same global value. And now, we are going to create our own simple version checking system. We are going to set up Unity Remote Config from the Unity service. And we are going to create a simple game that uses a Unity Remote Config. Let's start! First, you need to go to Unity Dashboard. If you don't have an account, you need to sign up. I already have my game project, but for this example, I will create a new one. Create project, naming your project whatever you want. I will name it as Sample Project. If you're done creating your project, click Explorer Services, and you can find all the services that you need to provide. And if you scroll a bit, you can find the Remote Config button. On the left panel, if you click the Config menu under the Remote Config tab, you can see the empty table. And on the upper left side, you can select Environment. Currently, it is set to Production. If you click the drop-down, you can see all the environments you have. I will switch it to Dev Environment. Click again config menu to see the key value pairs of the dev environment. And by clicking the add key button, you can add your own key value on the remote config. I will add a new one that would be going to be used in our sample project. Key name as android underscore latest underscore version. And you can select the type of the value. I will set my value type as string and set values 1.0.0. Then click add button. Now, you can see a row is added, but this is not the end. You have to click the Publish button to commit the updates. And this is our key value data stored in dev environment remote config. And I will add the same key value pair on the production environment too. So we finished adding key value pairs on the Unity remote config service. It's time to set up our Unity project. Let's create a new Unity project. Before creating it, you need to sign in to Unity Help because we are going to link our new Unity project with the project we created on Unity Dashboard. Name it whatever you want. I would name it Version Checking System. Wait for a few seconds. After the Unity Editor window opens up, link the current project with the Unity service. Go to the Edit, Project Settings, and Services. You can select the organizations from the drop-down, select, and because we already created a project, click the Use an Existing Unity Project ID. And if, if the project drop-down shows up, select your project. Finally, click the Link Project ID button. And now, you link the Unity project with the Unity service of your account. Next, let's install the Remote Config package from the Package Manager.
Now it's finished setting up our project to implement our version check-in system. Before diving into the code, I will briefly introduce our example game structure. There would be a UI that will show our version checking text or button to redirect players to install the newer version of the game. And there is a Unity Remote Config Manager scriptable object, which reads values from the Unity Remote Config and handles various things. A UI will use this Unity Remote Config Manager. And you may wonder about the flow of this app. Once we play the game, we are going to show a simple text UI that tells the client is now fetching data from the remote config data. If we don't need to update the game because the client version is compatible with the version saved in the Unity remote config, the text disappears and prints the message to the console that we don't need to update the game. If we need to update the game, a button will show up that might redirect to App Store. And let's get to the code. Let's first create Unity remote config manager scriptable object. So create a script directory and create Unity Remote Config Manager C# -sharp script. And extend scriptable object instead of mono behavior and add create as a menu attribute. Then we are going to add our remote config data class. This class cares about the data fetched from remote config. With this class, we can remove the dependency of the remote config package from the view of the color of this manager. And remember, we have a key of Android latest version in the remote config. So in the constructor, we get the value of it. And we are going to add one more in an environment. This tells which environment we are going to get the config data of. Next, we are going to declare several fields. One is remote config data. The manager will cache it once it fetches data from the remote. And environment. Internally, there is an environment ID managed by Unity Remote Config Service. We will map that ID with our enum. You can find the environment ID from the Remote Config panel. Copy and paste the proper environment ID to the dictionary. And we will add a public accessor to the config data. And because we are going to interact with the UI using pop-up pattern, we need several actions like on config data fetched or on internet connection failed. On config data fetched action will be invoked once the manager fetched the data from the remote config. And on internet connection failed action will be invoked when there is no internet connection while fetching data. And now we are going to add the main interface of the manager fetch configs. The caller can use this method to initialize and fetch data. In the method, using check for internet connection util functions provided by remote config package, we can check whether a client is connected to the internet. If not connected, raise the event on internet connection failed, so the listeners can handle this situation. Once we check the internet is connected, we are going to initialize remote config service. Set proper environment ID. And register fetch complete handler. After that, we now fetch data. Now we need to implement the initialization method and the fetch complete handler. In apply remote settings method, once the data is fetched, we convert the response into our remote config data class and broadcast it to the listeners. 
a listener in this case is the UI. Now it's time to add UIs to interact with our manager. As we talked about before, there is just a text and a button. And we are going to create a script that controls these UIs. I will call it UI version check. Remove the default script first. And add Unit Remote Config Manager scriptable object to the field. Then add text and button references. Once the game object is enabled, only display text, not the button. Then register a data fetch handler. And an internet connection failed handler. Finally, call fetch configs method. And we add the registration of event handler logic on onDisable method. Then let's implement those two event handlers. Go first with the simpler one. When there is no internet connection, we are just going to do nothing. We may raise another event or clear something, but in this example, let's keep it simple. Next is the data fetch complete handler. Once the data is fetched, we need to check the validity of the data. So we are going to add validation logic in remote config data class. If there is no data or the format is invalid, then returns false. In the handler, if the data is invalid, we are going to leave an error log and return. Now, there is one more important business logic. We need to compare the client version with the version stored in the remote config. To compare versions, we are going to create another utils class that helps compare semantic versions. We will create a util class named versions. In this static class, we are going to use C# -sharp version class in the system package and use compare to method. With this method, we can simply compare the string semantic versions. With this util class, we can determine whether we need to update the game. If we don't need to update, deactivate the text game object and print the log to the console. If we need to update, activate the button and deactivate the text game object. Now, head back to the Unity editor. We need to create our Unity Remote Config Manager scriptable object. So we are going to create a scriptable objects directory and create Unity Remote Config Manager in it. And in the inspector, we can select the environment. And we are going to choose dev environment. Attach our UI version check script to the game object and drag and drop this scriptable object and do the same on UIs. And let's go to build settings and we are going to change the version with the semantic version in format. Now it's test time. Unity Remote Config Manager is now in the dev environment. And the version of dev is 1.0.0. .0 .0. You can check the version on the remote config panel and the version of build settings is also 1.0.0 .0. So there is no need to update Let's check it out Click play Then you can see the text is disappeared and the log is printed on the console which is what we want 
Then let's check when the remote config version is higher than the client version. In this case, the game should show go to store button, go to the remote config panel again, and change the value to 1.023. And you must click the push button so the value can apply to the remote. After the push, let's play again. Now the text disappears and the go to store button shows up. And this is what we want. We implement our own version checking system. It's a quite a long video. I hope this video will help someone who has a similar problem as I have. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.